tonight on EA Sports. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on Justin Herbert and the L.A. Chargers. It's dreary and miserable throughout much of the Midwest, but don't fear, we've got football to perk up our spirits as we join you from Paycor Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. to go now on a wet and rainy night and we are underway from Cincinnati. Pulls it in at the 13. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Here are the Chargers ready to go on offense led by their first round pick in 2020. The man out of Oregon, Justin Herbert. And he is just absolutely marvelous to watch throw a football that's something i could do all day long watch him throw routes versus air but he's even more impressive when there are bodies on the field and he's creating with big throws downfield to throw right away and that one going to be off target and incomplete that certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down second and short I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion here's second and ten now from the 29 Justin Herbert looking to pass Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. He'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. All right, partner, I'm going to be Captain Obvious right here. Not the start you're looking for offensively, right? Incomplete pass followed by a sack. And when he went down, it looked like that right ankle got turned, but thankfully he popped up okay, and they breathed a sigh of relief on that sideline. I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. From the shotgun, here's Herbert. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. Able to slither by. So a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Tampa Bay coming out along with a man who needs no introduction, the great Tom Brady. Well, we've all seen what Tom Brady can do on a football field for a couple of decades now. But how about his most impressive accomplishment? Moving to a different franchise and taking them to a Super Bowl title as well. Not many players can continually stiff arm father time the way that he has.
And Brady and the Buccaneers here, first and 10, right at the 50-yard line. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Chargers are going to take possession of the football. Boy, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And, Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. A nice read on your part. And sometimes the quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees. Because oftentimes those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. After the turnover, here's Herbert. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. That incompletion certainly slows things down a little bit and brings up a very important call for second and long. What do you do? Run and try and get some yardage and make it third and manageable? Or challenge the coverage again, hoping for a bigger game? So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Here's the first carry for Austin Eckler. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. Here's Herbert. And this is going to be incomplete. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. Here's J.K. Scott set to do the punting honors. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. And Brady's throw there, incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. He'll look to throw. Floating one incomplete. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the gun, it's Brady. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. DeAndre Carter back deep. And just a 30-yard punt that time. And the Chargers will be set up pretty well as they take over in great field position. L.A. readies for its next possession. We sort of suspected that the elements might wreak havoc on both of these offenses, and that's been the case. No points on either side as this drive begins with a first down. Now 
it's Herbert. Finds the open man, it's Mike Williams. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Took him five tries, but he is able to complete that first pass of the game. And could you hear the exhale all the way up here? <laughs> not just from him, coaching staff, offensive line, receivers. Now he's off the schneid. Can they get him going in a nice groove where he becomes a little more consistent throwing the football? Because yeah, you miss those first two, but you get up the 0 for, 4, 0 for 4 range. That can be a little tricky, but able to settle in, hopefully. Yeah, now you won't have any confidence issues. Now you can kind of get it back, even with just one throw. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. A shotgun snap for Herbert. And a throw there going to be incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. They'll run for it with Eckler. And he is not going anywhere. They stop it for no game. He needed two. He barely got back to the line of scrimmage. And the Buccaneers defense holds and they get the football back. And even though they didn't get it, probably the right call. Too long for a field goal and just not a whole lot to gain from a punt there. Yeah, you wouldn't have really netted very much yardage if you pumped the ball, right? And the thing about a field goal, and you know this from so much experience, the longer the field goal, the lower it comes out off the kick, right? Which means it's got a better chance of being blocked. So you're taking a chance either way. I like the fact they went for it. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at the 40. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Another incompletion there. That's five in a row now to start this game. He's got to take a deep breath now, step back, shake it off a little bit, trust his offensive line, and hope that his play caller dials up something that can give him a completion and get him going. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. On the ground this is Leonard Fournette and they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. A quick burst there and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. To throw it's Brady looking for White on the deep ball. And it's a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. Here's Jake Camarda now. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. On the return, Carter. Not good at all. Punt of just 24 yards there. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They've shown very little offensively to this point. Well, neither team has, really. They come up here now first down. Herbert and that throw behind his man he missed him incomplete it certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully
An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to throw here, Herbert. He'll get this over the middle here to Palmer. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. That is caught. It's Williams. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. To the air again, Herbert. And that one complete to his receiver, Palmer. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it. And occasionally, you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Here's Herbert. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. Dancing to his left. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. The Bucks defense stiffens and pushes this to fourth down. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this won't get there, won't be online either. It's no good, off to the right, and this will remain a scoreless game. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. Yeah, 55 yards is anything but a gimme. You've got to really concentrate on your leg swing and proper technique. This time, though, he's unable to convert. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ball game as they come up first and 10. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. So finally completes his first pass. Credit the defense, though. They've been showing him some different looks, keeping him off balance. Yeah, I like, it. I like the observation that you had there because when you give him different looks and give any quarterback different looks, it takes just a little bit longer to process sometimes, and you don't throw the ball with the same confidence. You're not sure that that's where you should go with the football, and that's worked for the defense early in this game, and now he's got his first completion. Let's see if his confidence comes back, and he starts to get into a nice little groove. Yeah. 
On second down, here's Fournette. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field of the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling, and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. They fake the handoff. Now Brady. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The tight end, Cameron Brait, was the target. And it's third down and two. Well, that's a defense coordinator has got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now a play fake, Brady. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Excellent defensive effort to get to him and provide a little contact before the catch could be made cleanly. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. A first carry for Rashad White. Fighting him off. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. Now Brady. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Credit the sack to Joey Bosa. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Jake Camarda sent on now to punt this away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. L.A. set to take over again on offense. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. Herbert setting up to throw on first down. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. The result, only four yards there on the play, and it'll be second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because 
He really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred the defense. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Herbert now. He'll drop this one off to Eckler. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. A three-yard gain and enough for the first down. Short yardage situation. You have to wonder if they thought that they were just going to run it inside. But you have to be cognizant of the back slipping out of the backfield trying to find some open space. And that's exactly what he does to the tune of a first down. Herbert on first down now. That's caught, and it's Eckler again. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. We're scoreless after one. First downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Play action this time for Justin Herbert. Going up top. He's got a man complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A gain of 37. Not really any offense for them to speak of here in this first half. Maybe that's what they needed, that big play. Yeah, and it seems that maybe everything changes right there. They've been a little slow out of the gate. We've seen that. But that one big play, that could spark a big burst right here. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Out of the gun, Eckler running it. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. On second and nine, Herbert. This is caught, and he's brought down. Allen's first catch, good for a first down. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. They need about the length of the football here on first and goal. Eckler will take this into the end zone for a Charger touchdown. So, partner, it was a passing game that drove them down the field, but when they get close, they trust that man in the backfield, and he took them home. And they trust their offensive line as well because so many of these units, they specialize in either pass protection or run blocking. This group shows his versatility and gets both done on this drive. Now they'll line up. 
up to kick the extra point. And the Chargers grab the 7 0 lead. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's Austin Eckler who finishes things off with a touchdown run. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Takes it at the 7. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. It hasn't gone particularly well for them. That's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic, meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe you hit them on those short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. Now a throw right side taken in here to start this drive. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 17 yards is the pick up there for number 17. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Brady going to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. All right, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well, so give some credit to the defense. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. His throw incomplete. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there, hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. The Bucs on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. That's sacked by Khalil Mack. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And they will take over first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. Herbert going to lead up the Chargers here, first and 10 at their own 24. 
He'll hand off here to Eckler. And he'll get what he can up the middle. Three yards. And that'll bring up second down. So if you could play a defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier, but shut it down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Herbert. Throw over the middle into the hands of the tight end, Parham. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. And let's face it, you can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Back to throw. Herbert. This is swung out to Eckler. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And that gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. On first down, it's Herbert. High throw, but the catch is made. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. It's Eckler again. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Two yards, good enough for a first. But we always talk about good down and distance allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Looking to throw. Herbert, and his throw is incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Up the middle with Eckler. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. play of the drive coming up and certainly not an easy one on third and long back to throw Herbert he finds his target Allen and he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15 that third down conversion good for 23 and as a quarterback you always want to exploit gaps in the defense and he finds one here crossing route working from right to left across the field and once you get defenders going in the wrong direction it is awfully hard for them to pivot back and you end up getting the first down line of scrimmage the 15 it's first and 10 
Herbert operating from the red zone. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Williams. A gain of eight there on the play. And they'll be left with second and a couple. They go back to the ground now with Eckler. Six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. Some good, strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. Trying to punch it in with Eckler. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Austin Eckler with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Chargers have taken a two-touchdown lead now. It finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Extra point attempt to come here. And it's good to make it 14-0. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it's Austin Eckler who finishes things off with a touchdown run. unit on here for the Chargers as they will send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. 157 to go in this first half on EA Sports. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. A growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Another try after the first down sack. Brady. Here's White. They set up the screen. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Inside handoff now to Fournette. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. 
It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. With the Chargers offense back out and ready to go, and now consider the lead. The question is, how much is good enough? Are you going for more? It's the NFL. There's never enough, I believe, because they get reeled in all the time when you sit on the ball. I think that they will try and move the ball downfield and try and squeeze a few more points out of this first half. They'll be careful. They'll be a little bit cautious at times, but also they will attack downfield and try and get in position for at least three points. On first and 10, Herbert. They'll get this out wide to Eckler. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Uh, nowhere to go for Herbert, and he's going to go down. A big Vita Vea pushing his way through to wind up with a sack. Well, obviously the pass rush gets the glory and the statistics on this play, but the coverage, they deserve a ton of credit too. Denied open windows, erased the quarterback's targets one by one. Everywhere he looked, someone was covered. Only a matter of time before someone got there to bring him down. like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Operating from the gun. Herbert. He'll get this to Eckler. And he'll go down to the ground at the 39. And obviously that's well short of the first. And we're going to get a timeout. With two seconds remaining in the second quarter. J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for L.A. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. So we come upon halftime with our score 14 to nothing. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has certainly been one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference as the teams have already come back out onto the field for the second half. So let's get you back out as well to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. For more of the same, the rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. This one taken just inside the 10. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Yeah, this is going to put him back with a not great field position. So they really got zero benefit at all, right? Sometimes you can absorb a penalty when you get a big return. Then the penalty brings it back, but you still have great field position. As you pointed out, not in this case. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. He'll begin with a give to Fournette to start the drive. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now Brady. And 
and his throw is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Brady now to throw. This is White on the screen. And that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it will be first and ten as they take over. Now we'll look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. Chargers in good field position to start out. First and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. Here's Eckler to begin the drive. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Operating from the gun. Herbert. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Looking to throw. Herbert flushed out right. And that is incomplete. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, Defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them, and I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. On is the punter Scott here as he gets this one away. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. Officially, that'll be marked down as just a 28-yard punt, and the Bucs are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. So out come the Bucs now. And, Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Brady and the Buccaneers here, first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. From the 16, Brady. past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. Tom Brady flashing the mobility, scrambling there for a first down. He certainly isn't looking at the scoreboard out there because to me, all he's concerned about is he analyzing the field and making most of the time left in this game. Deficit's still there, but he's starting to hit them with some big plays.
the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Brady. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. Nothing in that first half, nothing on the last drive, but they're moving now with a first and 10. On the draw, this is Fournette. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The last run got six, now second and four. From midfield, here's Brady. He completes it to Julio Jones. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. And until that point, we haven't seen Julio Jones. That's hard to believe here this late in the game. And no one more frustrated than Julio Jones because receivers feed off of catches. That's their fuel, and that's also their affirmation. And he hasn't been getting much of that in this game, and their team is losing, and he wants to have a better effect on the game. Just the first connection, Ryan to Jones there. Kenneth Murray, the linebacker, there to make the play defensively. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Here's Brady to throw. And this is caught by Evans. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. To throw is Brady. And that is incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So look at this. Here's the field goal unit coming out. And he is going to need to bomb this one. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this will remain a two-touchdown game. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Thought that might be the goose egg breaker. Still stuck on zero. Yeah, this is still a tight game, too. We've got to keep that in mind because that miss there, you hang your head, you let it affect you the next time you go out there, then you've really hurt your ball club. Get yourself together. You might get another opportunity, and they're going to count on you to put it through the post. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They suspected it. It was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Justin Herbert looking to pass. For Keenan Allen, that's complete. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. On first down, Justin Herbert. 
They'll find Everett there, complete. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Running on first down, Eckler. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second and seven, Herbert. Now, a quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Here's Herbert. Got a man, it's complete, it's Palmer. Touchdown, Chargers! Josh Palmer, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Chargers have moved out in front by three touchdowns. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. The point after threw the raindrops up and good. And it's now 21 to nothing. A drive that time of six plays. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Josh Palmer. Kick unit on here for the Chargers as they will send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Well, time to get another look at this Buccaneer offense. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Austin Johnson gets the sack defensively. Oh, you can just see it in their body language. They're starting to see victory on the horizon now. And if it comes to fruition, they got to give a game ball to the front seven. Defensive line has taken charge and controlled this game. Face a challenge of stopping this opposing offense, and they've done so with ease. Pass. 
pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Another try after the first down sack. Brady, he's going to loft it deep right sideline. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line, it's a sack. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. I think we've seen this before. Someone's down three scores. That situation there is just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, a bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out. Not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little bit longer as this one goes. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he'll just punch it out of there, and it's not a great kick. Here comes Carter. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and the Chargers will be set up pretty well as they take over in great field position. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offense is called four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. Eckler now between the tackles. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. From the 29, Herbert. And that is going to be incomplete as he let him a bit too much. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. Now it's Herbert. And that will be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. think this will even nope it doesn't even get there well short and the lead will hold at three touchdowns the Buccaneers offense ready to rock and roll again and really Charles not much of a surprise that they're losing they just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game and as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. Exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, they've got to find some type of a play, multiple plays, that puts the ball in the air and allows for them to have some success. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves them with two to go on second down. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. A 
28 yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Working from the gun, it's Brady. This one taken in by Otten. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Brady now on first down. This one complete to Scott Miller. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Throwing again on second down. Brady dumps it off to Fournette. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Bucks on third down. A pretty anemic, a very anemic one for nine thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. And Brady's throw there incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Going with their tight end on fourth. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Good spot on the field to go for it. Kind of no man's land, as they call it, and it worked out. Yeah, they call it no man's land because your punter is telling you it's too short. I'm just going to punt it into the end zone. Your field goal kicker might give you a little raised eyebrow. Might be too far for the field goal, so it gives you a great chance to go for it. Personally, if you have those tendencies to be aggressive as a head coach, you kind of like this spot because it gives you the decision to go ahead and go for it when you want to anyway. If he's their best threat on offense, use your number one cover guy on defense. It doesn't matter about size. They have had him locked up. That just his first catch of the game. Big reason why they're down. <laughs> to throw again on second down. Brady, that's complete to White. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third down. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Now Brady. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down at about the 37 yard line Sebastian Joseph Day breaking through for the sack guys with his talent in the pocket aren't supposed to be getting hit like this and you know an intense conversation with the offensive line is going to occur after this one might not be from him but the offensive line coach will have plenty to say about this game Gotta have this one. Open man has got it. It's complete. They'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark him down at the 9. But no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league. A loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. He completes it right side to White. Showed off the footwork, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. 
three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. Boy, that one was well read defensively. And this is all about diagnosis as a safety and being decisive because he saw it setting up in front of him, able to knife through there and make the play. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Throwing now is Brady. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. You know, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Now this likely a must-have. Third and goal. Brady to throw again. taken down a very costly sack there on third and goal pushes him back big time and now you figure the field goal team coming on on fourth but one thing i do know these guys on defense they don't want this game to end they're winning by multiple touchdowns they've shut down the opposing quarterback in a big way and they're still picking up sacks as we approach the end of this one It's Brady. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt, and the Charger defense stands tall, and they get the football back. So they finally get their first trip to the red zone, and it ends with nothing. And that's what I'm going to focus on with you because you teed it up really well. Finally get to the red zone. So there's got to be a little bit of frustration because they haven't moved the ball as well as they wanted to all game. Now they get there, but we got to go for it because we don't know if we're going to get back here again. We don't know how many opportunities because they've been sputtering a little bit. Absolutely. At this stage in the second half, to get there and not get it for the first time, tough. They started on the ground with Eckler. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. So fourth quarter, a nice run there to start this drive. Charles, what do you think the split will be here between run and pass? Well, partner, I think it'll lean towards the run, but this is also not a time where you just totally do that. You still have to possess the ball, move the sticks, and keep the clock moving as well. So they'll run their offense, but yeah, when they have a chance to run it, they'll do that a little bit more. 45 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. They'll try to pick up the first with Eckler. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center, because remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you got that big guy on your nose. You got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. So following the holding call, what can they do here on third and long? Off the play fake to Eckler, it's Herbert. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, fourth quarter with a three-score lead here, Charles, but they're still going back to the air and looking for more points. Well, with this game well in hand, it's an opportunity for the guys to come off the bench and get a chance to play. And a lot of coaches, they want to run their full playbook no matter who's on the field. Here's J.K. Scott now, standing right on his own five-yard line. yards that time on the punt and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. At this point, partner, things looking pretty bleak. They still haven't scored here in the fourth quarter facing the big deficit. I just what Silver linings, what can they look to do here offensively? You know, it's funny. I talked about this with a coach in the offseason and kind of had this scenario like what feels good to you and what feels good to your team. You're down big. You really have like one possession left and you're trying to put points on the board that don't matter. But do they? 
and he told me they actually do matter. And in this situation, he's going to try and run the best offense he can run to have at least a little bit of confidence to take away from that game. So right now, they're going to try their best to get something up on the board and not get shut out. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. You cannot write these guys off just yet. Not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. To throw, it's Brady. It's complete. It's Miller. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Second down at five. Now Brady. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Evans. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. And that was a heck of a play there on the outside. Partner, sometimes I think on a play like this as a corner, you've got to think to yourself, all I've got to do is slow him down so others can come over and support. But in this case, he said, forget that. I've got this. Sorry you had to make the run for nothing, fellas. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. Now Brady again. They're looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And the Chargers are going to get the football here at their own 23. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. The Charger drive about to get going. They had the double-digit lead at halftime, and they have continued to roll. They're hard to stop right now. I think what we're seeing is an example of a team that has it figured out in this ball game. And whatever the adjustments are the defense has made, <laughs> hasn't, phased slowed them, hasn't phased them at all. They either anticipated them or they've been so far ahead that they just can't catch up. Now it's just a search to add to the lead. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Once more, here's Eckler. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. third down here's Eckler and he'll be taken down but he does have first down yardage only three there on the pickup but that's enough to move the chains no partner none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot now three plays all three short runs but together a first down yeah it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together So from the 36 now, first and 10. So this one's over. It's in the win column for the L.A. Chargers. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. Well, they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one.
So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. From Cincinnati, good night, everybody.